If you think it takes three to four hours to make homemade chicken broth, that means you haven't done it in a pressure cooker. We're gonna use our Instant Pot today to make a delicious homemade chicken broth in just over an hour. We're gonna begin by adding one tablespoon of vegetable oil to our Instant Pot, and we're gonna set our pot to the highest saute function. When you see wisps of smoke coming out, that means that the oil is at the highest temperature it can be, and it's gonna extract the most flavor out of the chicken we're gonna put in. And this is gonna take about five minutes. So we're gonna spend our five minutes patting our chicken dry. We're using three pounds of chicken wings here. We've chosen to use these chicken wings because we'll get a lot of collagen out of the joints and we'll get a lot of meaty flavor out of the meat. And also, chicken wings are easy to obtain and quite inexpensive. So I'm gonna pat them dry here. By the time our oil is smoking, it's about 400 degrees in there. So we don't want these to release their water. We wanna get the water off of them so we have nice dry chicken wings to go into our pot. So the main advantage of homemade chicken broth over the store-bought version is that by using the bones and the joints and the meat all together, we're gonna release a lot of the collagen. And the collagen in the chicken wings is gonna turn into gelatin, which is gonna give us a silky, luxurious taste rather than just like a chicken-flavored water kind of taste. Our oil is smoking and it's time to put our chicken in. We're developing flavor here, so we're gonna put half of them in at a time. I love that sound. We patted them nice and dry, so they're not gonna release that liquid, but we want everybody touch, touching this hot surface so that we brown nicely and develop a fond in the bottom of the pan. So we're gonna brown these on all sides for about 10 minutes. You can see there's not a lot of surface area in the bottom of the pot. So by adding half of the chicken, we make sure that everybody's touching the bottom of the pot. If we threw all the chicken in at the same time, we'd have a pile of chicken and we would create some liquid in there and it would steam rather than brown. And at this point, we're just trying to develop the flavor. We're trying to develop a nice fond on the bottom of the pot, which is gonna be the browning of the chicken. So half at a time, and then we'll take them out and do the other half. We've developed some nice browning on this side of the wings and a nice fond in the bottom of the pan. So I'm just gonna flip them all over and I'm gonna let them go for another five minutes on the other side. And then we'll transfer them to a plate and get the other half of our wings going. Our second batch of wings is nicely browned. There's a dark fond on the bottom of the pan and that is exactly what we want to build the flavor of our chicken broth. So I'm gonna add an onion to that. A lot of chicken broth recipes use a variety of vegetables. They'll put in celery and carrots. We're gonna keep ours simple today. We're building chickeny flavor on a lot of different heat levels, and we're gonna use onion and garlic and just a couple of bay leaves. So this is gonna take about 10 minutes to saute down. We want it to be really softened, and we want it to take in all the flavor of the chicken fat that it's cooking in. Our onion is softened. It's been about 10 minutes. We're gonna add onion's best friend, garlic. But garlic burns super easy, so I'm just gonna throw it in for about 30 seconds. We have crushed our garlic as opposed to mincing it because we really want in our broth to have a gentle garlic flavor. We don't want to have released all that garlic juice into our broth. We just want to have a gentle garlic flavor that works really nicely with the onions. So in about 30 seconds, that's gonna be browned and we'll continue on our way. All right, we built a little bit of garlic flavor in there and a little bit of onion flavor to mix with our chicken flavor. And now it is time to deglaze the pot. It may look a little bit weird here because I have three different measuring cups of water. And I, this isn't the way I would cook at home, but it's good for demonstration purposes to see what we're doing. We're just using one cup of water first. It's 12 cups all together, so it's really a lot of water. But we're gonna use one cup of water to deglaze the pan. And that's gonna allow us to use a wooden spoon to scrape up all of what's on the bottom. And it's gonna be shallow enough so that we can see the fond and also so that we're not splashing water all over the place and making a mess. So it looks like it is pretty clean now from all our scraping. And we're gonna add another 11 cups of water. Careful, careful, careful. 
And along with our 11 cups of water, we're putting three bay leaves and just a half a teaspoon of salt. We don't want to use too much salt in our broth because often broth is used in as an ingredient and when you use it as an ingredient, you often reduce it. And if we reduce it, it still has the same amount of salt in it. So we're going to barely salt it, just enough to highlight the chickeny flavor. And then you can salt your final dish when you're using it. So we're in there. We're going to put our chicken back in. And here's another important flavor step coming up right here. Once our chicken goes in, we're going to pour in the extra juice that it's released because that is another level of flavor that we get along with our fond and along with all our chicken wings. We have all this beautiful juice off the plate that's going in. And all that is going to mix together and make the best chicken broth you have ever tasted or made. So we'll put the lid on. So I'm gonna check the gasket, make sure we're gonna get a good seal in there because we're gonna be under high pressure for an hour. So we wanna make sure that the gasket is gonna give us a tight seal when we're cooking under pressure. We'll lock it into place. We will close our pressure release valve and we're going high pressure cook for one hour. So we're on high pressure for an hour now. We're gonna be patient. We're gonna let it come to pressure. It's gonna take a little bit for it to come to pressure. It generally takes about seven or eight minutes for it to actually build up to pressure and for the time to count down. So you're not actually gonna have one hour go away, come back in one hour, it's gonna be done. It's a little bit longer than that. You can count on about an hour and 10 minutes, um, an hour, 10 minutes for it to get up to pressure and an hour for it to cook. So we'll be back. So our hour is over. We're gonna turn off our pressure cooker and we're just gonna let it sit here and allow the pressure to release naturally. We're happy with pressure releasing naturally here because it's gentle. There's no danger of overcooking the chicken when you're making this, the broth. And so we can let it release naturally and we're just gonna leave it for 15 minutes. And when we come back, we're gonna have chicken broth. Our 15 minutes is up. Just to make sure, we're gonna click the pressure release valve. We're gonna let go of any steam that may still be in there. We're gonna open it up and look at our chicken broth. I'm gonna open it away from me to make sure the steam inside doesn't blow up into my face. So I am going to remove the chicken first. It is gonna be time to strain the broth, but before straining it, I wanna get as much of this chicken out of here as possible to make it a lot easier on myself. This chicken's really falling apart. That pressure did a number on it in here, but that's good. That means we got all the flavor extracted from it. Let's leave it at that. And now I'm gonna use some towels because this pot's gonna be hot. Remember, it's been under pressure for an hour. So I wanna be careful here and lift this out with some towels. And then I'm gonna pour it through a strainer into this storage container. So the last step in straining here, I'm pressing against the solids to get out all the broth I can. And we can see that a layer of fat is already forming on the surface. I'm gonna use a wide, shallow spoon here to skim the fat off the top. We want our stock to be as fat-free as possible. And an easier way to do this, actually, if you have the time, is to put this whole thing in the refrigerator and the fat will firm up, it'll congeal on the top and so we can just scrape it off. There we go, that looks pretty good. I think we have it. We made chicken broth. There's one important last step for your broth. You need to let it cool to room temperature. Then there's any number of things you can do with it. You can put it in your refrigerator, keep it up to four days, or you can freeze it for up to two months. I like to portion mine into a combination of different size containers depending on how you're gonna use it. You can use an ice cube tray just to have a little block to throw in and make a sauce. And you can use some two or four cup containers if you're gonna be making soup with it. There's nothing like homemade chicken broth to use in your stews, soups, and sauces. The pressure cooker makes it easy to keep some on hand at all times. So now you know how easy it is. Make some soon and cook with it often. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. 
You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs>